Welcome back. I'm Dr. Larry Chu. Hi, and I'm Dr. Agnieszka Czcinka. Now, in this segment, we're going to talk about something that is a little anxiety producing for residents who are new to cardiac anesthesia, and that is setting up the room. There's a lot of different things we need to do to set up the room. We want to give you an overview of that. Agnieszka, can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to cover in your lecture? Of course. So setting up cardiac OR takes up more time than preparation for other cases. So make sure you give yourself extra time to do so. The things that we're going to focus on is the setting up anesthesia machine, airway equipment, all the proper monitors, infusion lines, supplies for line placements, all the medications that you may need for the case, as well as trying to coordinate the equipment for TE examination if it's needed. Wonderful. I can't wait to see your lecture. Let's get started. The following presentation outlines information on basic cardiac OR setup as it is done at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Please be aware that the setup might be different at your institution. You should start in a stepwise fashion, making sure that you have a working suction, perform standard anesthesia machine checkout, and have all necessary airway equipment, including a large 8.0 or 8.5 endotracheal tube. The equipment in a cardiac OR includes standard ASA monitors plus the following devices. Triple transducer with pressure bag, with red transducer corresponding to arterial line, yellow transducer corresponding to PA catheter, and blue one to CBP monitoring. Head of the bed setup includes defibrillator pads, which are located in the OR supply cabinet, defibrillator 3-lit EKG, and standard 5-lit EKG. You may also place a gel pad as a cushion under patient's head. Equipment in the pocket of the right pole includes fibrillator and pacer. Make sure that you test batteries for the pacer and test fibrillator for power to ensure that both devices will work properly during the case. Defibrillator is located on the right side of the bed and is usually tested by the nursing staff. But please make sure that the cable is connected to the defibrillator pads placed on patient. Cardiac anesthesia cards are different, so familiarize yourself with the drawers. Cardiac non-controlled medications are in the top drawer and include most of resuscitation medications that may be needed during the case. You may have to obtain them from pharmacy for the first case of the day. On top of the cart, place the medications that will be needed for beginning stages of the case. If possible, fill out the medication request sheet and leave it at the pharmacy the night before scheduled surgery so that the medications will be ready for pickup, saving you time in the morning. The requested medications may vary depending on patient's past medical history and planned surgery. However, the usual induction syringes include standard emergency syringes of phenylephrine, ephedrine, atropine, and succinocholine, and additional syringes for fentanyl, propofol, oritomidate, non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent, esmolol, phenylephrine diluted to 40 mics per ml concentration, epinephrine diluted to 8 mics per ml or 4 mics per ml concentration, and nitroglycerin diluted to 40 mics per ml concentration. Also, confirm presence of heparin in your cardiac kit and place it on the top of the cart as well. Some extra medications that can be kept on the side wing of the blue cart include albumin, but only if your attending has specified its use, cardiac drips in premixed bags of phenylephrine, 320 mics per ml, epinephrine, 16 mics per ml, and norepinephrine, 32 mics per ml. Aminocapraic acid or tranexamic acid, again only if your attending has specified its use, insulin drip, and antibiotics, which for cardiac cases usually include vancomycin and cefazolin, administered based on patient's weight. On the left palm, you can set up the fluid warmer and four-channel alaris pump. You may organize your infusions in whichever way makes sense to you. Here we have an example from the left of Amicar infusion, 
VIP line, which is a vessel active infusion port with one liter normosol on micro drip with a gang of four, and cefazolin. On the right pole, you can set up your bolus line with one liter normosol on half of water's tubing attached to gang of four. Central line will be placed in patient after induction. You can set up a tray with all necessary supplies that include four triple lumen catheter, multi-lumen CVC kit, Mayo stand cover, one sterile half sheet, one set of gloves, gown, probe cover for ultrasound, central line dressing kit, and two sterile flushes. Depending on the case, you may be told that patient needs central venous access via cordis with a slick. Cordis is an introducer sheath that can be used for rapid volume delivery during resuscitation or for subsequent placement of a swan Gans catheter. Slick is a single lumen infusion catheter. However, most often in clinical practice, it is refers to triple lumen catheter that locks into the top of a cordis. Please discuss with the attending what central line access is needed for the case and set up accordingly. Thank you very much for watching and good luck. Wonderful lecture. Learned a lot. Great pictures. I love pictures. I learn so much visually. Now, Agnieszka, one thing that I would love to do, though, is to try to place those pictures in a frame of reference to the room itself. Um, would you be willing to walk around the room with me so we can kind of see where everything goes? Of course. Let's get started. All right, Agnieszka. So I really would love for you, you to show me, in the same order that you did your talk earlier, where things are located in the room. Can we start that way? So let's get started. So as in the presentation, we're going to start at the anesthesia workstation, making sure that the anesthesia machine is properly checked out for the day and that we have all of the airway equipment nicely laid out and ensuring that we have a large 8.0 or 8.5 endotracheal tube. Perfect. What's next? Well, so let's focus on the monitors. So as we're heading toward the bed, we have the triple transducer, we have the, the defibrillator 3-lead EKG, standard ASA 5-lead EKG, as well as the defibrillator pads. On the right side of the bed, we have the pacer, fibrillator, and defibrillator. Make sure that the cable from the defibrillator is connected to our defibrillator pads before we get the case started. So that's actually a really important point because sometimes people forget to connect it to the cable. And of course, if you want to activate that in emergency, you need to have it connected already. That's right. That's right, Dr. Chu. Okay, what's next? All right, let's focus on the anesthesia cart, which is right here. So keep in mind that the anesthesia um, uh, cart in a cardiac room is quite different. Um, remember that in our first drawer, we have the non-controlled uh, resuscitation medications. And then on the top of our cart, we have all of the medications needed for induction and beginning stages of the case. Here in a bucket on the side here, we have some extra medications. And just as we discussed in a PowerPoint presentation, discuss with your attendings which extra medications you may need before you check them out from the pharmacy. Now, one thing that I'll note is that for cardiac anesthesia, often your carts are different than the cards for pediatrics or general anesthesia. And so you may wish to look at the card at your institution and familiarize it with yourself, especially when you're just beginning cardiac anesthesia. Now, uh, myself, I notice one thing that's missing from your card, and that's protamine. Um, mm -hmm. uh, is there a reason that you just don't have it here available because so it would be convenient for dosing? As you may recall, it's very important to administer protamine at exactly the right time during the surgery, making sure that you really converse with the surgeon about when to give it. And so for the safety factor at the Brigham Women's Hospital, we do not keep it in our anesthesia cart, but rather we keep it all across the room in the cardiac um, OR uh, nursing staff room. And when the time comes for the protamine um, administration, we ask for the protamine to be brought to us. Great. And Dr. Weedman will have a great lecture about protamine and heparin and why it's important for us to institute these safety measures uh, later in the course.
Well, let's continue. What's next? Sure. Let's go to the left side of our bed. Here we have the fluid warmer set up, as well as the four-channel LRS infusion pump. Um, here we also have the VIP, which stands for the vasoactive infusion port. Um, every institution might be a little bit different how we set this up. Uh, at the Brigham, we set it up on the micro dripper connected to this gang of four. However, at your institution, you may connect this line and program your Alaris pump to deliver a certain um, rate of the uh, infusion to the patient. So check with your attending before you set this up. Wonderful. And um, finally, what's, what's next? All right. So we move on to the right side of the bed. And right here on the right pole, we always have a setup for the bolus line. And here we just have a regular tubing with the gang of four. Um, set up and ready to go um, for infusion to the patient when the central line is placed. I'm talking about central lines, do you have all that equipment? We certainly do. We can move on over here. And here we have a tray with all of the unopened supplies needed for the placement of the central line. Please refer to the PowerPoint presentation and what exactly you may need uh, for the central line placement. Well, I see it's really nice to have all your equipment organized in one place on the Mayo stand so that you can access it quickly. And more importantly, um, what I've noticed from your setup, Agnieszka, is that it's very standardized. So mm -hmm. you know uh, that you have everything you need, you know where it is, and, and how to get it quickly. That's correct. It helps to sort of take it out of the equation when perhaps things get stressful when you're taking care of a sick patient, knowing exactly when things are in the room and how things are set up. Wonderful. Yep. Great. That was a lot of fun. I have a better sense now of where everything is in the room, but I do have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do when you don't have an hour to set up a room? What if a heart comes crashing back for a take back or, or you have emergent cardiac surgery? Tell me, what are the essential things that I need to do to get a room ready quickly? For emergency cases, you will have to focus on the basics, making sure you have a working anesthesia machine, proper airway equipment to be able to intubate the patient, induction medications, and vasopressors diluted properly to ensure the induction is done safely. You may also call for extra help to be able to bring extra equipment that is necessary for emergent case. Wonderful. Well, you know, I feel so much better about setting up a room now. Uh, I think, you know, to summarize what we learned here, we learned that setting up a room really involves time whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Get there early. It's better to get there early and get your room set up and be prepared. Um, and, and that involves getting your airway, your drugs, your infusions, your line, your equipment set up. And that's really the process that, of anticipating and planning your needs. And if you're organized, uh, and you have everything set up in a regimented, standardized fashion, which many institutions do, mm -hmm. uh, then you're going to be able to make sure you're always prepared. And isn't it great to be prepared? Indeed. And uh, we hope this module has helped prepare you a little bit better for your cardiac anesthesia rotation. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.